Hello and welcome to another edition of the Mexican Soccer Show. I am your host, Cesar Hernandez, and we are here to talk about Chivas. We're here to talk about the Liga MX. We're here to talk about the Europeos, the CONCACAF Champions League final. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about Gio and Kubo, the you know the five to ten seconds that Kubo had in his match last Friday that uh, Naiv was there for. Uh, yeah, but we got plenty to talk about. <laughs> we got plenty of exciting things to, to discuss. Um, but first, let me introduce you to our guest tonight. You know, we say guest, but at this point, you guys are almost essentially host as well. You guys, I, I, should, I should just say introduce <laughs> friends. I, it's not like this is your first time on the show. But anywho, we have uh, Tom Marshall over in Guadalajara. Tom, how are you doing? Hopefully your internet is a little bit better today as opposed to last week. <laughs> yeah, last week there wasn't actually any internet. <laughs> I don't know how it's working. No, but last week I was just getting it off my phone because... I don't know. It's not really the the time or place to discuss it, but um, I had a massive problem. I moved house, and then I had this problem where like none of the internet companies would install in the house, and they all had like a different reason. And I was just like, "What is going on here? Like, what what on earth am I going to do in life?" <laughs> so, so eventually, I was lucky. Tel Telmex just rung and said, "Oh, we've we've we found internet." And I was like, "Sweet, <laughs> get, get it installed." <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Uh, so here I am with internet, and you know, you, I don't think you appreciate, you know, how good internet is until you, until you haven't got it these days. <laughs> Actually, I think you said it's not the time or place, but I think people do like to look behind the curtain and like, you know, see those kinds of, I mean, for you, like those kinds of problems that you have, just trying to get internet in uh, in Mexico and Guadalajara. All right, let's go over to Naive Moran, who is not in Mexico City. Actually, he's now back in Houston. I heard that the reason he went back to Houston was. Because the internet problems he out. had last week, yeah. So he's like, you know what? I I'm gonna be on the show. I just gotta go straight to Houston. So naive, how you doing, man? Buenas how noches, Cesar, uh, Tom. And yeah, that's that's the reason. I think that's the reason why I'm in Houston. I, I wanted good internet, and I flew from Mexico City, got on a plane, <laughs> and, and now I'm here. Uh, but but uh, the 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 weekend the weekend in general was was great. I think there was a lot of um, Interesting events, you know, with Jonathan coming back um, into the starting eleven against Rayo Vallecano. He he got an assist. Uh, unfortunately, Villarreal lost, and the five-game winning streak that America had was cut by Querétaro, who who has beaten America in the last four league matches, which is quite remarkable. That Querétaro sort of has uh, a way of beating America, and of course, the week ended. Uh, weekend ended with with Chivas's win over Atlas. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, it's definitely an interesting weekend. Some surprise results, especially as you mentioned the uh, the America loss. I don't think anybody in our predictions um, for the weekend actually <laughs> even put in a draw for that match. So that's uh, definitely a good point. Um, but the first thing we're going to talk about, and I'm going to go to you, Tom, over on this, um, is a classical tapatio. It was a game that everybody was looking forward to. Um, some people were pushing for. I mean, not push, but perhaps predicting a little bit of a higher score for Chivas, maybe racking up two or three goals against Atlas. They ended up finding the win. Yeah. It was a narrow win, but it was a dramatic one at the very yeah. last second. And Tom, t tell us about uh, your experience there and what it was like in the in the stadium, the Estadio Chivas. No, yeah, I mean, it felt before, and honestly, like the amount of Chivas fans coming to the stadium with flags and like, you know, there's one massive gigantic flag, and you know, it's probably 80% Chivas fans where where usually th these things are more evenly split. So I don't know. I think before the game, it felt like Chivas fans. This was a, a big moment. Like it was like almost like coming out of like, you know, we're we're we're, we're back. You know what I mean? We're back, and we're gonna beat Atlas today, and we're gonna do it in style, and we're gonna show that you know. This team, this team is going to be in the playoffs and it's going to challenge for the title. You know, it didn't quite go to plan on the pitch, but at the end of the day, <laughs> you can't always play really well. And I thought, <laughs> Chivas won ugly. I mean, they really did. They got the job done. And it doesn't matter when you score. You know, second half injury time, Jai Pereira steps up. You know, jumps higher than all the rest of them, and and. You know, three points Chivas. I mean, that's the bottom line. Um, you know, aside from that, I thought Atlas actually played pretty well. I think Gustavo Costas realizes his team is limited and realizes that I think he wants to play like kind of open flowing football at Atlas, but they just don't have the players right now. And so I think he was just really pragmatic about kind of sitting back. It was really interesting tactic, although it might be a bit boring. Um, 
you know, the very minimal space between like the defence and the midfield. You had like mm. Tata Gonzalez and um, Arevalo, who, who, were, who were exceptionally good. I thought they played very, very well. You know, shielding the defence. Um, but then the, Atlas were extremely limited going forward. I mean, they they had very, very little. Um, second half, obviously, Atlas came into it a bit more. Chivas, I thought, I thought they ran out of ideas. I thought that they pushed so much in the first half to try and create openings. And Omar Bravo had a couple of chances, but I thought after that, after, in the second half, I didn't think Chivas were that good. And I don't know. I think it was even though there's the three points that it just I think um, take a step back and you say Chivas are a good team right now, but they're not Monterrey. You know what I mean? They're not. Yeah. They're not the complete package yet. Even even though you know, obviously, it's all positive and and the confidence running through the players now is unbelievable. And and the play Chivas aren't a bad team, you know. And when you got that confidence, then then and and in a league like the league where mix, which is so so evenly spread, you know, there's there's not massive differences between the the best and the worst team. Then you know anything's possible now for Chivas this season. Yeah, most definitely, especially when you can see like massively surprising results. I mean, you saw them with the Querétaro America match, and that was that was a good point when you brought up that. Uh, you know, I mean, in the end, there's going to be a lot of momentum for Chivas. All that matters is that they got those three points, but they were pretty close to losing. I mean, Bonchito, he had the he hit the the crossbar. That could have been the game-winning goal. Who yeah. knows what could have happened if that shot was just a couple inches, just a, a couple inches like uh, lower. Like it could have been an entirely different match for for Chivas. Yeah, I mean, I just thought that like stopped Chivas in the first half, and then after the break, they kind of, they Atlas gained in confidence, and they were like, wait up, Chivas aren't they're not that good, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we we can go out, we can kind of step out a bit and try and do some damage at the other end, and and they did. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think both teams had the chance. I think if Omar Bravo would have put that in in the his big chance in in the first half, I think it's a different game. I think Chivas would have gone on to score a couple more goals. But you know, it, it it didn't work out that way, and yeah, I mean, Chivas, <clears throat> it's pretty amazing to be in Guadalajara and notice and go to the games regularly and notice the different atmosphere now, just not just in the stadium but all around the club, compared to a year ago or six months ago. Because when Chivas is like this and and playing so well and and the fans are behind him, Chivas makes sense. You you start to understand what Chivas is as a power in the Mexican game and just what a massive institution it is and and how much it means to people. I mean, you know, just walking out after the final whistle uh, on Sunday, it was like it was amazing. I mean, you know, you had like thousand thousand people in the concourse just like shouting, screaming. You know, it meant so much to him to win and. And yeah, I think like it's like the Chivas Nation is is almost back after, you know, two three years or more of it just being really in the doldrums. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Oh, and, and, yeah, yeah, and then and just to add uh, to what Tom and, and what you have said, so, so, I mean, there's 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 certain things that are clicking in in Chivas. You know, for example, I think Cota had a couple of good saves yesterday in in that match as well as Sustari had, but I think Cota did did have his moments. And also the defense. I mean, Pereira, Salcedo, Chapo, eh, and Aris Hernandez. I think they're they're one of the best defenses in the league. And I said this last week, but yesterday, you know, it was Raúl Deditos López with the cross and Jair Pereira with the goal. I mean, they were fundamental in that moment. And Deditos López coming off the bench, which I think it's more significant because it it says that all of the club is together. Even the bench players are becoming crucial. And of course, you know, I. I I, I like like Tom said, it, Chivas is not Rayados, but the thing that um, that gives you or, or the enchanting thing of Liga MX is that a team of Chivas caliber with this momentum that it has shown in the last weeks, it can potentially go far. I mean, it, it, I'm not gonna say that it's a title contender, but if you compare the squad that Chivas has right now with Guli Peña and Orbelín Pineda, which I think have come about have come big in the last weeks. You know, it's a it's a really good Mexican team. You know, it's not that it's not that far off from what Santos was a year ago when they won the Clausura 2015. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think there's similarities there. And let's not forget, Chivas went to uh, Rayados' place and they beat them um, three to one. So I mean, it's it's not something that they're not 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 aware about. You know. Yeah. So here's something I'm going to ask you yeah. guys uh, really quickly: is uh, can you guys confidently say that Chivas are going to make it into the year? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think it's. Well, I think they're on 21 points now. You know, if you get to 25, I think you know nine times out of ten in this league with the format, you're gonna make it. So you know, four points in the last three games. The Chivas have got Pachuca away next weekend. Very difficult, mm -hmm. but again. It's not. It's not impossible. Uh, Dorados de Sinaloa at home. They were already relegated, and we're gonna. You know, we'll talk about them. And then they're finishing up at Santos away. Um, I, I can see Chivas. I feel like yeah, and, and it, yeah. Let, let, we'll see with Santos as well whether they need points as well because that could be a massive game. But I, I, I can see Chivas getting four points out of those three games. Yeah. No, I I agree. I mean, now you brought it up that. Uh, you know, talk about momentum, you know, and right now there's a huge amount for them. And as I've mentioned before online, too, that, you know, the Ligia, the playoffs, they reward those teams who go into the competition with a lot of momentum. And right now it looks like Chivas are heading into this perfectly. You know, this is the exact kind of situation that they want to be in, and it wouldn't be surprising to see them getting at least two wins uh, in the next couple of matches. Yeah, I mean, and uh, like I said a little bit also about a player that I didn't mention is Brizuela. I mean, when you got a, yeah. a, a player like Brizuela yeah. in top form, there's not that many players like that in Mexico. I mean, uh, who who does that wing wing kind of uh, game like Brizuela? Very few does do it, and and he's doing it pretty well right now. I mean, a lot of speed, yeah. a lot of uh, gambeta, and I, there's 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 a lot of defenders in Liga MX that don't want to face that, you know. And I think uh, yeah. it's it's clicking at a, a at a right moment. Yeah, no doubt. I think a quick, quick word on Atlas, the other, the other side of the coin. You know, like I said, I think they did certain things quite well on, on Sunday, but yeah. this is Atlas, man. You know, they're supposed to be an attacking team with playing with young players who, you know, go forward and are exciting, you know. And it was like, it's, it's just it's depressing at the minute watching Atlas and, and watching how this season, another season is just going to peter out. And the, you know the last few games now are pretty much worthless. They might be getting dragged down into a relegation struggle. I mean, you know, it's absolutely disastrous. They've got no sporting director. You know, Costas doesn't look like comfortable in his position. I mean, mm -hmm. if the, if you need a new sporting director, then the first thing they would usually do is 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 question the coach's position. And Costas, you know, he's not been here long, but what's he done? He's guided a team to last place. Yeah. You know, an experienced team to last place. So. Don't look great for him, and, and you know, Atlas really for me should be like Tigres or Monterrey. Or let me put it a different way: there's no reason why Atlas shouldn't be like Tigres or Monterrey yeah, in terms of the fan base, in terms of being in big city. So I mean, they've got it all wrong, Atlas. I, mean, I don't know, don't know what's happened there, but you know, considering now they've got TV Azteca as 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 the owner, it's like it was supposed to be a new dawn for Atlas, and it's turned out to be uh, you know a disaster again. You know, when you talk about like exciting attacks in the league, you wouldn't really bring up Atlas. You really would not bring them up at all. And the last really, team. Yeah, there's, there's really no one in the attack that has really stepped up this season at all whatsoever. I mean, maybe... But I guess he was like a defensive number nine. <laughs> 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 but I guess he'll, he's, like, he's good in that position at tackling the defenders. And like kind of chasing, and but he's not good at scoring goals. And at the end of the day, he needs someone to score goals in that team. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we move on to uh, Querétaro and América, uh, any any other last thoughts on Chivas? Uh, any predictions? Maybe how they're going to do in the next few matches? Maybe a ridiculous yeah. early prediction about how they're going to do in the playoffs? Just at, at, any any thoughts uh, on uh, I, I, Los Rojiblancos just... before you? I'll give you a quick, a quick thought before I forget. I think, I think key for Chivas is that um, they need a bit of luck in terms of injuries. I still don't think it's a very deep squad, and I think you've got key players that you really need to be fit. We saw Zaldivar when couldn't play against Atlas because of injury. It upset the balance of the team. Omar Bravo came back. He didn't really do well. Um, and, and Chivas were playing with Brizuela as like a false number nine for like yeah. for part of that second half. So. You imagine a Peña or Obilin Pineda goes down injured, or a Pereira, you know, or Salcedo. I think that Chiefs could have problems. They need a bit of luck in that in that department. No, that's an excellent point. Now, you have any any last thoughts, or are you you ready to move on and talk about uh, the surprising loss? Uh, for no, Vega? I might think in general. I think uh, in conclusion, is that Vergara got it right, you know, with Almeida and, and giving him time and, and letting this work out, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, 
um, you know, he's getting the wins at the at the right moment where where the team needs them, and then the team is on the verge of Liguilla. When a couple of weeks ago they were not even close to Liguilla, so I mean, uh, in that in that regard, uh, Vergara got it right, you know, and and giving Almeida time, which is rare when when Vergara gets it right, you know. Yeah, yeah. I must definitely agree with you, and it's and it's paid off. And it's paid off. It's paid yeah. off. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one thing I would say is that. He said so much stuff about the club playing good football and doing well that it had to come good eventually. I mean, I don't, you know what I mean? I mean, he's, I, I could say, you know, every season one team's going to be champion and eventually they're going to be champion. You know what I mean? Without knowing anything. But anyways. All right. So that being said, um, you know, I, I, you know, Puebla, they're gonna, they're gonna push for the playoffs and they're gonna win the title. And I'm just gonna keep saying that. Let's see, let's see if that happens. <laughs> let's see if that happens this season. I'll just keep saying it every season. <laughs> All right. So, um, so moving on, let's talk about uh, Querétaro uh, beating América one to nothing. América had 23 shots in that match, but only three of them were on target. I think personally, I, uh, I think you know, after winning, I think it was five games in a row. Um, yeah. This is just one of those Liga Mekis matches that you see every now and then. It's happened to Monterrey, who's at the very top. They, you know, they they struggle surprisingly against what was I think it was Cruz Azul, you know. Uh, but this is this is uh, this loss came near the end of the season, and this is for a club that has very high expectations. Is this something that fans should worry about, or is it just you know, is it just kind of like a you know Liga Mekis match where this happens every now and then? Uh, Naive, give us your thoughts uh, just on this match. You know, I think, uh, yeah, it, it, I mean, Ambris was coming with in, with a sort of comfort, you know. Uh, I mean, I think uh, before this match, the the sort of feeling in the, at Guapa and the training grounds was really of positivity and a lot of laughs and a lot of jokes and, and because they were, already, they were already thinking about Tigres. I mean, I think this match against Querétaro, that's you saw that's that fault. Um, unfortunately, the thing, the thing that's a little bit worrying now is that Tigres got a really convincing win over, of course, the relegated team that is Dorados, but it's still a convincing win because Andre Pierre Gignac got a brace, and all of a sudden, America, you know, doesn't score a goal when they have been scoring tons of goals, and, and there's this doubt, you know, because against Tigres, they won't have Quintero and Miki Arroyo uh, due to suspension. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it, it does raise questions. I think it's not the right moment to get this, this loss because it... It sort of puts doubt a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ambris will, of course, say that there's no doubts going on in the team, that mm -hmm. they already know the goal, which is to win the CONCACAF Champions League. But, you know, against Querétaro, a team that has been really bad the whole season, yeah. uh, it does look bad. Um, and and, and we'll, we'll, we'll have to see because with Ambris, he, he was on the verge of doing something historic with the club, which is winning eight consecutive games with America. And he fell short on that goal. I mean, he only needed three more wins, but uh, that 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 will sort of stick, and and we'll see what happens after now because it's been a while since we saw America be on the losing side, losing end of things. So uh, I think uh, it it will be interesting to see what happens on Wednesday against Tigres, and then Toluca comes, and then I think it's Tigres again, and then Monterrey uh, at Azteca. Yeah, that's, that's something I wanted to bring up as well is that it might be a tough finish for them because as you mentioned, they got. They got Tigres, then they have Toluca, and this and I, Toluca. I mean, in the end, they probably shouldn't pose too much of a danger to America, but they might have some momentum after the recent win over the weekend, when when the, in which they scored four goals, and then after that, uh, yeah, they play Tigres, and then they essentially take on a uh, Monterrey uh, in the in the week after that. That's that's a, that's a playoff match right there. That's a playoff preview, perhaps like a final preview. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna be interesting if they. If they collect a couple of losses, let's see, you know, what kind of momentum they have heading into the playoffs if they if they lose a few of these games. Yeah, I mean, I think they're already in the playoffs on 27 points, so. Yeah, I mean, there's. You know, I don't, I don't think it's. I mean, they're in there. I mean, you know, I think the other thing with America is that they could have guaranteed it last weekend, and you know, I, it was interesting that it would have been nine consecutive league years, which would have been a record. Since the uh, two seasons a year was introduced, what was it, '97 or something, '96? Yeah. But um, and and for me, I mean, all right, this game, I think, Cesar, you said that it for me, it was a blip. You know what I mean? It, it happens. You know, you go away to Carretero, uh, Vucicic <laughs> in charge, and and you can lose those games, and the ball won't go in. Um, but I mean, I, I think America in general as a club, 
despite the ups and downs that that you know you, you follow the press and it's like it's supposed to swing and stuff you know with Mohamed and then Matosas and then Ambris and and you're like well this must be a club in crisis and it's like to find that consistency of of reaching nine consecutive league years is pretty incredible i mean there's a reason that they're going to be the first club ever to do it and that was they've got a base of very good players and and for me you know i've said it before america are a very good team for me i think they're probably the third best team in terms of the squad so i, I don't have any real doubts about america Obviously, can they go to Caretto and lose? Yeah, of course they can. Monterrey can go to Caretto and lose, but you know, I think they're going to be. Obviously, they're going to be in the playoffs again, and I don't know. He wouldn't back against them unless they're unless they're playing Monterrey or Tigres. I'm not backing against America. Um, you know, I think if, even against Pachuca or Leon, I'd back America. Yeah, and even even after that loss, as I mentioned, like you know, I mean. You know, there is there is actually like I think it's statistically speaking, I think Pachuca and America are, are nearly in the playoffs. Like it's going to be very very difficult for them not to be in the playoffs. Yeah, but and I mean looking at yeah. yeah looking at Cesar and, and Tom about Ambris, I think that's that's where the doubt goes. I mean I think Ambris mm -hmm. still yeah. hasn't proven uh, if he's ready. You know, and I said this last week with with you know with comparing him to Turco and how he already is ready. You know, when he came to America, he was ready after winning the the championship with Cholos, but that's not the case with Ambris. And Ambris has this European experience because he he was assistant to Aguirre in Europe, and I think that sort of makes him a special coach in Mexico. But the titles are not there to sort of solidify that that curriculum, you know, to sort of prove with with trophies that that he's actually a good coach. And I think this is where the challenges come. I mean, I think the find the Concacaf champions will be important for him just to see where he's at because he's playing against, you know, he's facing a viejo lobo de mar, you know how they say in Mexico, uh, an experienced coach like like Caberretti. So I think here is his first major test and we'll see how he does. And unfortunately, America won't have uh, Paula Aguilar in that first select of the CONCA Champions final. Oh, really? I did not actually know that. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Well, yeah, the, the other thing with Ambrís for me is he's lost the big games. Apart from yeah. that Chivas game, which I thought they were lucky to, to get to get the victory, and he's lost the big games at the Club World Cup. He lost against was it Pumas? Was it Pumas in yeah, the, the um, in the semis? They lost it. They should they, they capitulated against Pumas. Um, I'm trying to think of the other occasions, but it's, it's slipping from my mind. But you yeah. know, you know, that's the question lost, mark about Ambrís. Um, that's the question lost. about about. Big Sorry, games. What can he do in the big games? And and you know what I would say is that if he can beat Tigres in the Concacaf Champions League, then imagine the momentum. Yeah. You know, then imagine the momentum. He he will have time to to rest players in one of the last uh, three games or two games, whatever it is. So he'll have that kind of. Um, he'll be able to to say, all right, you sit out this game. I want you ready for next week. Um, you know, to 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 the to the big players. So. I don't know. I mean, let, let's see. I think it, I think it's going to be the Concacaf Champions League final is going to be fascinating. Not just to see who's going to represent Mexico and Concacaf at the um, the Club World Cup, but also I think it's going to be a real indicator of who's got the momentum out of those two clubs going into the into the playoffs. Yeah, no, that's excellent point. And we'll see. I mean, like now you said, like maybe he's not ready. Maybe he's not up to the to the level he should be at. But, I mean, he's going to be put to the test, whether he likes it or not. There's a good chance, there's a decent chance he has an opportunity to win two titles in this 100-year anniversary for America. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's go to Tigres 5, Dorados 2. Dorados, it's, they were kind of extending their stay in the Liga Mekis. They were doing their best. They got actually a few wins recently, but it's now official, and uh, it was at... Uh, the expense of five goals from Tigres, and it looks like they're they're back. It looks like they they might be uh, pushing a little bit for the playoffs. So let's uh, give us your thoughts on the game. Um, let's go to let's I don't know. Let's I, maybe we'll go to me. Maybe we'll go to Tom. Let's go to Tom. Let's go to Tom. <laughs> Tom, give us quick, quick. Let's give, give us give us your <laughs> thoughts on Tigres five Dorados two. Give us some thoughts on Dorados. Well, yeah. A bit on Tigres. <laughs> All right. T Tigres, I think you know, obviously. You know, the the, the it, it was I mean, they were two one up by the time Meza got red carded. But I mean, from there on, it was pretty much a very easy game. 
you know, against against probably the worst team in the league. So, you know, it was, it was an in to get a couple, you know, damn to get a couple as well because I think he's not been quite as good these last couple of months and Sobis as well getting on the score sheet. You know, that's good for him. Obviously, they needed that. We expected, you fully expect Tigres at home to, to go out and uh, do a job on Dorados. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing I'd say about Dorados is, well, two things. Firstly, I don't think they've ever looked at any stage since they've got promoted like they belong in the league. Like, they've, ne they've not even pushed Chivas or Morelia in the you relegation say, stage. You wouldn't, even in recent, you wouldn't even say in recent weeks. So they, I mean, they they got three victories. They only had one loss in their last six matches. I thought they. I thought it was. I thought it was too little, too late. I thought that. But... Yeah, but I mean, they're already. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're already down there. What I'm saying is, look how many points they lost two seasons, and then they're not equipped to stay in the league. I don't think it was a, a very even a very serious attempt to stay in. Um, I don't know. I don't want to like kind of go crazy on um on what's it called like um wild uh accusations or whatever, yeah. but I mean, I think when you look at the ownership, and the ownership's the same as, you know, Club Tijuana, mm -hmm. does that ownership group actually want two teams in the first division? Because I, I, I think, if I don't know, I have no idea, I've not spoke to anybody, but I think they were, they, they could have been quite happy with, with Cholos, you know, in, in the top division, and then they had that deal with Dorados who would send the players and the, the Cholos young players would go to Sinaloa, get the experience and then head back to Tijuana. So I don't know if they really wanted two teams in the league. I mean, let's look what's happening with Atlas and Morelia. You know, mm -hmm. two teams that next season are likely to be fighting relegation again. You know, both owned by TV as Tecu. It's, it's difficult to maintain two teams in the top division. Obviously, Pachuca and Leon. But look at the investment in Pachuca. Look at the investment in Leon mm -hmm. over those two teams. So they've got they've had huge money behind them. And I don't know. I think I think I mean look at the team. I mean Nestor Vidrios, Severo Mesa, Luis Michel, Fernando Arce. I mean these are players that they weren't really wanted at the clubs they were at. I mean buying players and thinking this is this player is brilliant, it's going to absolutely shine in this league, it's like it's like they were knocking on the door saying uh, what have you got for us, you know what I mean, have you got any, any spares yeah, for us you're not going to stay up like that I'm sorry, it's, the, the league's better than that yeah Naive, your thoughts on a uh... On their on their relegation on a, or on, on perhaps Tigres. Uh, on yeah, the, I mean, I think uh, yeah, the last two teams that have uh, gotten uh, promoted have been Leones Negros and, and Dorados. You know, I, I think um, in the marketing sense, Leones Negros did wonderful. Dorados didn't even do that. Dorados was just invisible, invisible the, during the year they were in, in Liga MX. Leones Negros left the brand. I think everyone, you know, I, I'm always impressed of the number of Leones Negros jerseys. That I see in Mexico City, and I'm like, Those oh, are gorgeous, that? so that's why. <laughs> you know, that, that, they did also great YouTube videos with Fidel Martinez, yeah. Mark Rosas, yeah. Hector Reynoso. So they yeah. left a good brand. Dorados was not even that. And, and, and I'm not justifying Leones Negros, but Leones Negros, you know, they brought in a, a three three Ecuadorians and everything, and and it sort of wanted to click, but Dorados. Was a uh, all messed up project with with Luis Suarez, who not Luis Suarez, uh, Suarez, who was a Colombian head coach in Dorados, and and, and it didn't sort of feel comfortable from the from the start. So I think, you know, uh, Dorados really didn't need anything memorable in Liga MX, which I think is unfortunate because you know the region is, it, it has this historic aspect that Pep Guardiola played in Dorados, yeah. and and they couldn't explode yeah. that. You know, and I think that's what I leave. I mean, the last two teams, at least Leones de Gros worked on the marketing, but uh, Dorados didn't do anything. Yeah, the, the other thing, yeah, like you said about the region, it's like, you know, it's, it's arguably the best region for sport in all of Mexico. You look at the amount of players that come out from Sinaloa, in you know, comparatively a small state. You look at the boxing scene over there, you know what I mean? And it's like Sinaloa deserves a team, but, yeah, I, I just don't think they were, they, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't ready, were they? They weren't ready. I think it took them by surprise. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, I think we would. I don't know if you guys agree, but I think we could. Uh, most would agree that. Uh, I mean, that, that obviously the the relegation system isn't exactly fair to those teams either. You know. Where, uh, you know. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's a little bit yeah. too difficult. But this, at the same time, though, like that being said, I mean, 90% of the games you watch from Dorados. I mean, you look at them. I mean, it, 
and you just think, you know, that this isn't a first division team. This isn't yeah. someone who should be playing. Well, yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah, the other thing was the games weren't on. The home games weren't on in Mexico. Well, I, at least I couldn't get them. I've got like the obviously got the package where you get all the games, and uh, but Dorado's Dorado's games weren't on. You had to have a sep a, some kind of cable provider, or you know what I mean. So just that fact, I mean, they weren't even being showed shown on TV. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. could you watch they them maybe or not? Well, I watched them online. I watched them online. Oh, you watched them online? I watched them online. Oh, yeah, you can watch them online. I used to have too much trouble. I don't think, I don't think that's... <laughs> I don't think that's the idea of TV deals, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so really quickly, just uh, it's almost been about uh, 37 minutes to talk about Liga Mekis. Uh, let's, talk, uh, let's talk about Morelia for a second. I think... Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the momentum Chivas has had, the consecutive victories, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like Morelia isn't getting the same love. I think Morelia, I mean, they've been doing really well. I think they've had, it's had three or four straight wins. They're in sixth place. And I talked about this on Twitter, but their last three games are going to be against Dorados, who we were just talking about, Santos Laguna, and Veracruz. There, there's a good chance that this team is going to be finishing in the, and going into Leguia. You know, what are your guys' thoughts? I mean, especially after that one nothing win over Pachuca. That's pretty significant, you know. Let's you know, let's let's talk about Morelia for a little bit. And Tom, what are your thoughts? Surprising, surprising. I mean, I, I'm surprised that I look again. I look at the Morelia team, and not it doesn't get me very excited. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I don't look at it and think, wow. You know, again, it's one of those teams where, you know, like uh, Pablo Velasquez front. You know, obviously he's a good player, but it's not like wow. I'm going to go and watch Pablo Velasquez. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> Bellerano has been around. Um, you know. Uh, Perez from Atlas, Edepin from Atlas as well, who Atlas rejects, you know what I mean? And you look at them, um, you look at you know, where Atlas now are now. But I think, I think you've got to give a lot of credit to um, Ojitos Mesa. I mean, he's, he's got his team together. They weren't doing that good, that well, sorry, a couple of months ago, but he's, he's, he's got it together. And the one thing I'd say is that Morelia are ahead of a lot of better teams. There are a lot of better teams than Morelia below them in the table right now, and that are out with the players running. So you have to give credit to the manager there. I think he's done a, you know, an exceptional job of getting the group together. And uh, you know, like you said, Cesar, I think you know one, you know, one win out of the, those last three games. You know, a winner and a draw, and they're pretty much definitely through. So, what can you say? I'd, I'd, I'd say, just quickly, Santos Laguna as well. I, I, I kind of fit him into the same category in, in terms of. I don't know, they've kind of like just come just there, you know what I mean? They're just there in the playoffs and it's like, wow, how, how did they get there, you know what I mean? And then you've got the likes of Cruz Azul and, uh, you know, Pumas and Tigres, Toluca, who, who were all behind them and, and, you know, fair play to them. I mean, they're the, the getting results, not conceding a lot of goals and once they're in the playoffs, you never know, do you? But I don't know, I, I think, you know, perhaps Morelia, you look at the last few teams they've played, um, Apart from Pachuca, obviously that's a big win at home. But you know, Atlas, Puebla, and Chiapas with the with the past three games. So, have they have they got it to beat the big teams? I don't know. But if you're in the playoffs, then you've got you've got every chance. You know what I mean? Yeah, most definitely. Naive, really quickly, uh, your thoughts on Morelia uh, in general? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, the, the the win over over Pachuca was surprising. I mean, I'm really impressed with the goalkeeper actually, with Carlos Felipe Rodriguez, who I think he's 27, somewhere around there, uh, Mexican goalkeeper. Mm. He's got top saves. I mean, I think Tom was there when when he blocked um, a PK by uh, by Negrito Medina, and and that was crucial in that match. And also, you know, against Pachuca, he got I'd say three good saves against Pachuca. So I mean, I think that's been the key. Mm -hmm. And about the point that Tom said about Santos and Morelia sort of being in the same group, I think it's the home record. I think, but uh, Santos and Morelia have gotten important home wins. And I think that's what has them in the in the Liguilla zone, basically. You know, the, the teams that haven't been able to sort of make their home, uh, 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 you know, a place that where they can get wins are the teams that are out, basically. And so if, if you were able to get tie, draws or wins at home, I think those two, Morelia and Santos, uh, exemplify it perfectly because they've gotten uh, key wins over there at, at their places. And I guess that happens most seasons too. You know, at least two of those sixth, seventh, or eighth place teams. <laughs> you kind of look at them. You're like, what are you, what are you doing here? Like, what, well, how did how did you qualify? How, I have no. Jeopardizing Veracruz, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I think that happens most seasons, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, it looks like Morelia is gonna. It looks like they're gonna be in there. I, I mean, if I don't know if they could really compete with the best, but as we mentioned before, yeah. it's Liga Mekis. I mean, if you compare the momentums uh, with between Chivas and Morelia, they're totally different. I mean, they're they they're both with four for with four wins, consecutive wins, but their ideas. I mean, the flow of ideas are really different. You know, Morelia is winning in the last minute with nasty goals. Well, Chivas is winning games, elaborating great goals, you know, by Chofis, Brizuela, Gulli. It's a different style, and it's uh, at the end of the day, it's just not going to work. I mean, if Morelia plays Monterrey in the Liguilla, Monterrey is probably going to win that series 5-1, to one, for example. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just exact. <laughs> Definitely five one. All right, uh, let's move on to league matches. We have more stuff to talk about. We have a little, little over around twenty minutes left. But really quickly, go through the rest of the scores. Um, Tijuana lost to Rayados one to two. Um, Toluca beat Veracruz four to two. Cruz Azul lost to Santos uh, one nothing. Leon beat Puebla four to one. And then we got uh, Pumas who beat who beat Chiapas two to one. So before we go over to quickly talk about the Europeos, any last thoughts on Liga Mekis on any of those scores? Uh, uh, before we, yeah, as I mentioned, going over to the Europeos. Um, I'd say you know Tijuana's situation now is becoming more and more serious. I mean, I think they're really struggling now, um, and the relegation is becoming a potential issue next season. Cesar, so, so you're up there in San Diego, Tijuana. You you know more about it, but I think I think I don't know. I, I, I think they've lost that idea from where they went with the championship winning team to where they are now. Got that excitement about them anymore? Um, yeah, I mean I don't know. And then Leon, I think you know Leon are pretty much in the playoffs now. I think they're worth worth pointing out that um, you know Tenner. It looks like they're enjoying now playing under Tenner. I think William Yabra got the goalkeeper was saying the org defensive organisation has been you know really backed up since Tenner came in. And then the other one I think is worth pointing out is um, Cruz Azul. Yeah. I mean, what was it? Three weeks ago, we were like, Cruz Azul are back. And, you know, Cruz Azul, you, you look at the players they've got and you imagine the wage bill that they must have. And it's like, pff, I mean, you know, losing it home to Santos Laguna and, and now dropping out the playoff places. I mean, it's not good at Cruz Azul once again. Yeah. Naib, your, uh, your last thoughts on Liga Mekis? I mean, I think I'll put a little bit more emphasis on the Cruz Azul issue because, um, you know, this weekend, I think it was Matias Bozo who came out on one of the networks in Mexico and was basically <laughs> dishing at uh, Tomas Boy and critiquing his style. You know, I, I, once that's what it is with Tomas Boy. He's a ticking bomb, you know, and at any moment that thing, that, 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 that thing is going to explode. And, and unfortunately, it looks like it, it, cause it's exploding right now, yeah, looks right so when the... <laughs> When the regular season is about to come to a close, and and it all happens without Chaco, without Chaco Jimenez being part of the team, you know, Chaco is out with a a facial injury that he had a couple of weeks ago, and 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 you take Chaco off out of the picture, and the whole team just destroys, it's just demolished in a way. So let's see, maybe if Chaco comes back in and he's able to save uh, a little bit of what the season is left. Uh, really quickly, on Tijuana, without taking up too much time, I'll t maybe talk just like 15 seconds. But uh, yeah, no, I agree with Tommy. I mean, Piojo Herrera, there was high expectations for him. You know, we know what Piojo represents. We know what he's done. I mean, he took Mexico to the World Cup. He uh, helped America win a, you know, a title. And then now he's with Tijuana, and he doesn't have a single home victory. You know, there are questions about his tactics. There are questions about. Um, you know, his formation, the 5-3-2 at home, maybe it's a little too defensive, and then there's questions over some of those starting players, so we'll we'll see. I think they'll, you can't imagine they would they would ditch him already. Um, you would see someone of his stature would probably get a little bit more time, but you never know. You never know with the Liga Mackey's. But... Would he leave, though? Would he just leave? Yeah. No, that's, that, 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 that's... that's I, 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 can, I can see that happening. I mean, I exactly. can just see if there's another job coming up saying, you know what, this isn't working. This, this job needs heavy investment in the playing squad. It's not for me. I'm sort of tried my best this season. I've done what I can. Um, I don't. I don't think the youngsters are there. I don't. Think, you know. I think a lot's got to happen to, yeah. to, to get us regularly playing for the player. I don't know. The way Miguel Herrera is, I don't know. I, I think he missing Mexico City. You know. I don't know. And you well, knew he took. It won't you surprise me. Yeah, you knew he was taking risks by moving to Tijuana as well. I don't know if that's uh, if that was yeah. his first choice club. 
Um, but anywho, uh, we could perhaps talk about another podcast is around 746. Another podcast is if there's a separate podcast like that. Cholo's <laughs> podcast. I am that. Cholo's Quinkle podcast. Cholo's <laughs> Quinkle. Starring Sessad and DJ Cuddles. Um. All right. So uh, the Yodo <laughs> Uh Fire Leverkusen three. Eintracht. Uh, Frank Fart. F- I s- Frank Fart again. <laughs> oh my god. I did this last week. I said Frank Fart. I said Frank. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> my. You know, as I mentioned last time, I'm just sticking with it. Frank Fire. All right. Uh, there's a lot of hype about it. And in the Bundesliga, we've talked about it on Twitter. They've done an excellent job, an excellent, excellent job of recognizing this Mexican market who idolizes, who gives so much attention to, this, to these Mexican players. And they were hyping up this match. Fortunately, it wasn't the, the finish they probably wanted. Fabian didn't play, and Chicharito was injured. That's not what they probably wanted. But, uh, but focusing on the injury... Um, I haven't actually been checking the news uh, on his injury for most of the day, but do either of you happen to know any details? I have yet to see anything. I mean, it doesn't look like it was that serious. And all everything seems to point that the Chicharito injury isn't very serious. But uh, Tom or Naive, I don't know if you guys have heard anything regarding any details is on on his situation. I heard it. So I think there's been nothing. Yeah, I think I think we've heard it's not serious, but there's been nothing kind of. Um, official on it. So there's nothing actually to say, oh yeah, he's definitely okay. Um, I would say um, there's an ESPN journalist called Bruce Schoenfeld who I've been in contact with, and he's actually doing, I don't know if it's out there, but he's doing a big story on Chicharito. So he's, and he, he actually tweeted at me today and he said, from what I've heard, it's not that serious. So he's fine. But I think he said he's fine. So He's not just made that up, you know what I mean? He's, he's a proper yeah. journalist and stuff. Yeah. And he has been following Chichi Lito over the last couple of months, like, properly. I think he's doing a mass story, for, like, for the magazine or something. So, yeah, that's that's the only thing that I've that I've heard about it. So we just got to wait and see in that. But yeah. at least there's some good indications because what you don't want is that it starts to affect the, the Copa America and stuff. I mean, yeah. not just for Mexico, but for, for the whole tournament. I mean, Chichi Lito's yeah. just such a massive star. I mean, when they have those four players up there, it's what it's Chicharito, it's Dempsey, the Neymar, and I forget who the who the fourth player is. I, I, but it, he, he's one of the yeah. Messi. Is it, oh yeah, I, I've heard of him. Messi. <laughs> <laughs> that good. Uh, but uh, anywho, so um, I mean, I, I don't know if there's anything you guys really want to say about the game. I feel like that's all we could really take from it, you know, and Chicharito had two shots, um, I don't think either of them were on target, and he had to leave the game uh, early, but any any thoughts on uh, the, the win for Leverkusen over Frank Fart? Um, I, no, I, mean, I think uh, it, they're, they're in the Champions League area, you know, of the, the table, so I mean, I think that will be massive to to, to I, I, I mean, it, it will be massive if, if they manage to get into the Champions League, you know, I think uh, uh, what is it, Borussia Dortmund uh, and and Bayern, Bayern Munich? You know, both teams are in the in the semis. No, actually, Dortmund already got eliminated by Liverpool. But you know, those are two teams that have been playing great football in the season. No, no, that's an excellent point. So we'll see if they get able to maintain that. Um, the other, I think, uh, thing we have to talk about with the Europeos is. Uh, was it the four nothing win for Porto over Nacional? Um, it wasn't the most. Can, can I just can I just say one thing quick? Oh, of course, Sorry, go for it. Sir. Dude, Just yeah. quick quick thing about um about Fabian. Yes. Like, I, I know the build up from the Bundesliga and the and the Eintracht Frankfurt and and Leverkusen was brilliant. I mean, from a from you know a social network point of view, PR point of view, marketing absolutely brilliant. But let's not forget Fabian since March twelve. So in over this is we're talking like probably you know coming on five weeks now he's played 14 minutes in the Bundesliga, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah, they're promoting him. The, the 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 and and this is for a team fighting relegation. That's not good. You know what I mean? That's, That's not, not good. good with the Copa America coming. It doesn't look like he's going to get minutes. And you know I think I think Fabian's place now in the Copa America squad is on is in doubt because he has to prove himself between now and then. He's not one of those players who is automatically going to be in there. So let's have a look. It's not going to plan for Marco Fabian in Germany. No, that's that's a that's an excellent point. I mean you, you, you look at the last roster and if you were to have to take a few of those players out, Fabian would probably be one of those first options that you would take from the uh, from the last uh, uh, players that you saw on the last roster. So no that's that's an excellent point. Um, so yeah so Porto 
for uh, Nacional Zero. Um, I think a couple of key things to point out here was, uh, you know, Hector Herrera got a goal. Tecatito got two assists, but Miguel Layun was on the bench the whole time. I mean, you could say that he was perhaps getting rested, or maybe uh, there's some worries over his uh, recent performances. Um, Naive, your thoughts on uh, on Layun uh, getting benched in the last game, or just uh, in the game in general? No, we'll, we'll have to follow that. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to follow that. I, I don't know if it's because of uh, you know a, a drop in form. I don't think it has, but you never know. I, I think uh, it was just one bad game. I, 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 yeah. I think. I think it was, might have been literally one. Better. Yeah, I mean, and Porto has been sort of chaotic this whole year with, with you know, early elimination, change of coaches, uh, really not battling for the league title. Uh, but overall, I mean, uh, looking at the two assists from Tecatito, I think that's good good news. Hector Herrera scoring goals. And, um, you know, a lot of the things that are going on right now with Mexican footballers in Europe in general, it, 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 it's just... However they perform, I think that that should open the doors for other players to to arrive in Europe. You know, we'll see we'll see if it, it will be a Pachuca player. It likely, it will be a Pachuca player. Will it be a Chivas player? You know, that are they're 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 in top shape right now. So I mean, I, it, it always helps that that for the most part they're always doing a a good job in Europe every weekend. You know. Yeah. No. Excellent point. Excellent point. So. Uh... Just uh, rounding up just the Europeos, um, Hector Moreno, he played 90 minutes in PSV's 3 nothing win over Rota. Uh, Reyes and Vela, they played 90 minutes in Real Sociedad's 2-1 loss to Ivar. Alan Polido didn't have uh, any minutes. I think they just put a bunch of uh, backup players in Olympiacos' uh, last game of the season. Yeah, the Greek, the Greek uh, by the way, the Greek league is now officially over. Um, Gudinho, he let in, uh, Raul Gudinho, he let in a... Uh, uh, four goals in Madeira's uh, three to four loss. Um, Ochoa played 90 minutes uh, in the one nothing loss to Bilbao. And I think if we were to point out just one more thing, or actually, wait, wait, Raul Jimenez played eight minutes today in the two one win over Setubal. But uh, he, uh, I forget if it was either Saturday or Sunday. Uh, yeah, one more thing to point out was that John Dos Santos got his first start from his uh, from his in after his injury and uh, got an assist in the two one loss. Uh, to Rayo Vallecano. Um, any any yeah, thoughts? Let's, let's, yeah. let's, 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 let's hope he kicks on Jonathan Dos Santos. Now I feel like he's been so unlucky with injuries at like really bad times, and he like you know you go back to the Gold Cup last summer, and he, he seemed to be like really established himself as a, a national team, and, and under Juan Carlos Osorio, he's I think he's been injured for for both the call up so far. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, he's got. I think he's he's got the ability to become a regular starter. I think Osorio, if, if he wants that type of player as, as a holding midfielder, then you know Dos Santos is. A, I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing how Osorio would use him if if Dos Santos is, uh, you know, is is fit and playing playing because at the end of the day he's playing. Uh, top club. I mean, Villarreal have been have been brilliant. You know, absolutely brilliant this season. And you know, you look at the budget compared to some of the, you know, the big the big especially the big two, but even the big three in Spain. And you look at them there, fourth place. You know, they look like they've got that. I mean, the, the six points off uh, Athletic. So, I mean, this has been a great season for Villarreal, and and I think it's so good for Jonathan Dos Santos that he's back from injury. And he's back starting, you know what I mean? I think that's yeah. it shows a lot about how much uh, faith the, the manager's got in him. Yeah, John, like Jonathan, I th he's he's one of my favorite players to watch, and I, I mean, he I think he proved in the in the in the Gold Cup. I think he was a second best player after Guardado. So, you know, he is he is at that level where he should be a starter in the national team. I personally believe that, and I, I really do uh, hope that he is uh, healthy by the time the Copa America um, comes around. Yeah, um, I mean, I think uh, I think uh, yeah, he's he. I mean, look, think about it. I mean, it's interesting that position that that uh, that Tom brought up. I mean, because you got Jesus Molina, uh, then you got Gallito, and then you got Jonathan. But uh, Gallito is not it's not the Gallito from two years ago, basically. I think that's the truth, and that's yeah. what we're seeing a little bit there in, in Leon. Uh, and I think in this show we've talked a lot about momentum. Which player will arrive into the into that call up in May, uh, late May, early June, uh, in best shape, you know? And I think that's where Osorio will have to decide uh, what player he want, which player he wants in that position. And I think if Jonathan 
reaches the Europa League final with Villarreal after defeating Liverpool in the semifinals, well, I think uh, he he will be in great shape to yeah. to to take that role. Yeah, I agree. And just really quickly on on Jonah, just uh, I think he's also a versatile player. I mean, he doesn't have to play in that defensive mid position. He could potentially be in one of the attacking mid positions as well. Yeah, he can move over Guardado as that defensive mid position. And I think uh, I think Bolina and Gaito are maybe a little bit more similar than Jonathan to, in comparison to those other two players. So you're gonna have to drop one of those players. And I think Jonah just because of versatility. And with the momentum, I think he'd be a, a key person to have. But um, yeah, I think I think I think Gallito Vasquez um, has been. I think Gallito's been a bit affected by. I think Leon and mostly playing now with two contenciones, whereas before yeah. it was that three midfielders. He was the he was kind of the pivot, and then the other two were kind of more attacking. So you know, and you'd assume that Osorio is only going to play with one holding midfielder. Um, and I think Gallito, is, I think he's just like lost his kind of sense of what he is in the team with that. But yeah, the other, the other option for the holding midfield role, and I, I think it's something that Osorio is going to use, because obviously he's, we've seen that he's going to change change uh, formations and players from game to game depending on the to the um, the opposition. But I think Diego Reyes as well. I think I think sometimes he wants a bigger player in there, or even Rafa Marquez. I think he wants somebody who can kind of drop back into the defence and become a centre back and have the height and the the physique to kind of to mix it as well. You know, uh, 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 Tom brought up Rafa Marquez right now, and, and he's seen Rafa Marquez the most, I think, out of the three of us. Uh, Tom, do you think, considering Jair Pereira's form from Chivas and, 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 and his ability in the center back position, do we think that Rafa should be in the Copa Centenario squad? Yeah, I mean, uh, on his form, no. I thought he was actually pretty decent. On uh, on Sunday, I mean, some of his tackles were <laughs> were a bit X-rated, but you know, I thought I thought he did all right, but I, I don't think I don't think you can compare him to Pereira. I mean, if you pick Rafa Marquez, it's it's obvious what what you you know that defensive solidity. I mean, it's I think I think Osorio will use him in a back three, or he would use him as a, a defensive midfielder. I don't think he's going to put him in the line of four Rafa Marquez with Moreno, for example. Because at, at this stage of his career, he, he can't. You need more protection than that. And Moreno's not the quickest either. So, you know, I, th I think that's that's how you would use Rafa Marquez. You'd you'd use him as like a kind of defender that 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 starts the attacks and and probably against lesser teams, to be honest. Um, but has he done enough this season to deserve being in the in the Copa America? No, I mean, is you can't argue that. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's a bit, You couldn't argue that position. But Rafa Marquez has has got the um, you know, obviously the history and Osorio, for Osorio's style of play, you know, playing with the ball at your feet and, and stuff like, and playing out of the back, I think that that's why he's, he's likely to be in. I mean, I think we're yet to see that that next Mexican player that, that can play out the back. I mean, you know, obviously Reyes has got a certain amount of that ability, but it's nowhere near Rafa Marquez. You know, you know, maybe Cesar Montes in the future may have that. I think Salcedo has a degree of that, but again, it's no Rafa Marquez. Yeah, and I think there's some excellent defensive options, but yeah, no, I don't know if they're really at that level just yet where they could uh, become the next Rafa Marquez. All right, just to wrap things up, uh, let's quickly talk about uh, Giovanni dos Santos, uh, who actually scored two goals. Naib, you were at the at the game last week against the Houston Dynamo. Uh, tell us a little bit about Gio. Uh, is he back? Is he going to be? Is he going to be scoring uh, regularly now after uh, getting those goals against the Dynamo? Yeah, I mean, I think it's excellent news for him. You know, I think it's uh, he he he's gotten a lot of confidence. I mean, it was interesting to hear Steven Gerrard speak about Giovanni's game after the game. Uh, you know, saying how he had worked his his socks off <laughs> during the week, and, and 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 he saw and we saw the fruits of it on the pitch on Friday. Uh, you know, the performance that Gio had on Friday against the Dynamo is the type of performance he should have every weekend. You know, being influential on the ball, you know, sending in crosses with his left foot, taking shots, taking risks, you know, because that's what's all, what it's all about, you know, in the MLS. You know, a player of his caliber should take as many risks as he can. And and, and, and the only way that he's going to have those chances is if he has the ball. And in that game against the Dynamo, the Galaxy had the ball the, for practically the whole game. And I think uh, that's going to be key, you know, looking ahead of, uh, I think the goals are important, uh, but also uh, the support that he receives from the club, from the coaches, from from the media, 
media people, from the players. You know, every everyone loves Giovanni and the Galaxy, and and and, and hopefully that sort of uh, means that he will give more performances like he did on Friday. Yeah, well, let's see what happens because I feel like if if Gio isn't scoring, um, he gets a lot of criticism. A lot of uh, a lot of us Mexico fans. Uh, Give him a hard time and say, "Oh, you're an MLS, blah blah blah." You know, you're not scoring. You should be the national team. But I feel like, like sometimes we talked about this before we started the podcast. Even if Gio is scoring and providing assist, people still say the same thing, like, "Ah, whatever. It's just MLS. It's not the same level." Blah blah blah. You know, you 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 should be playing in a in a different league. So uh, we'll see if he can continue this. And what I who I do feel bad for is uh, I mean, while we're criticizing Gio, uh, you know, whether he's scoring or not. You know, you see Google, who can't get a starting role for the Dynamo, a Dynamo squad who is before this game has done all right without him, you know, at least scoring. And like, you know, you, you wonder what this means for him. You wonder what this means for him, at least for his Olympic career. You know, maybe someone's thinking, you know, like maybe we shouldn't be starting him this summer if he's, he can't get minutes in MLS. We should probably get a, an older striker. And as I mentioned, you know, maybe someone like Oribe Peralta, you know, he he could be back returning to the Olympic squad. Yeah, I mean, we'll yeah. see. We'll, 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 uh, Tom, you can you can share your opinion about this one. No, I mean, I, I, I think it's a problem area for the Olympic team. I mean, you know, Marco Bueno hasn't exactly done great things recently. Uh, Kubo Torres hasn't either. So I think it's almost certain that Mexico are going to take a, an overage striker to the Olympics. So I just can't see any other option yeah. um, if you if you want to go far in the tournament. Um, the other thing about Kubo is let's see what happens. Let's see if he moves on. Because you know he's making very good money at Houston, and I'm sure, like from their point of view as well, if they're not even using him and stuff, then I'm sure they'll be keen to kind of get rid of him. And then you know, where would that be? Another team in MLS? You know, what other team could use him? Or or back to Mexico? I mean, you know, you look at Chivas yesterday, and Omar Bravo came off, and and Brizuela was playing as a centre forward, <laughs> and it's like, Kubo. Bravo's 36, Zaldivar's there, you know, I don't know, I mean, it would seem to be a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's it's interesting what you bring bringing up, Tom, uh, even Fierro is the striker in the U23 that is not playing, yeah. you know, so, I mean, it, it's really worrying, and that's, an, and today, Potro Gutierrez spoke at uh, Centro de Alto Rendimiento, and, and openly stated the fact that it would be nice to have Tecatito Corona in this Olympic team because he fits the the bill, you know. Uh, imagine having Tecatito on that team. It brings more goals to a team, but from the wings, it doesn't have that central striker. And, of course, yeah. the options of Chicharito, Peralta uh, come to mind, you know. Yeah. Or, or Tecatito up front. I mean, he's played there before. But, you know, it depends on the system. It depends on how you want to play, you know what I mean? But, I mean, it could be a very fluid system if you've got, like, you know, Lozano um, on one wing, um you know, Tecatito as, as like a kind of false nine. And then uh, who else is the winger? Who are the wingers that are up there? Um, so I can't think right now, but, yeah. you know. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. One of us should know. Well, you know, you've got, for example, Cisneros or whoever it's going to be. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, Cisneros could definitely be there. I mean, you know, it'd, it'd be uh, interesting, to say the least. I mean, playing in a slightly different way without a kind of main centre forward. I mean, that's one of the options anyway, I imagine. Yeah, well, I'm sure we could talk about this for a while, but uh, we'll have to save this for the for the U23 podcast that I'm starting. It's in collaboration <laughs> with a podcast. It's kind of 50-50. We talk about the Olympics, then we talk about uh, the Cholos. <laughs> All right, so to wrap up the show, let's talk about an exciting upcoming match. I say exciting, but... Honestly, I'm 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 not that excited about it. It's uh, it's it's the Concacaf Champions League final, and I should be excited about it. This is just me just me talking personally for a second. I don't know why I'm not that excited for it. Maybe because I did want to see an MLS side, and I like that animosity and the American fans getting angry at the Mexican fans. But this Wednesday, we got Tigres versus America, and then they face off again next Wednesday uh, in the Estadio Azteca for the Concacaf Champions League uh, title. Um, Tom, give us your thoughts. Are you excited for it? Let, let's hear your thoughts. Tom, are you excited for this? No, I, I, I agree. I agree. I am I'm, I am excited. I mean, I think that when it gets to, like, uh, Wednesday as well, you know, I'm going to be definitely looking forward to it. But it's not something that, like, you know, has been there's been any build-up to, let's be honest. I mean, it's not been really in the press much. Um, and, it, it, you know, 
if you've got four semi-finalists from the same cl- from the same country, then it's not exactly you know a great advert for your for your regional com- for your, for your you know yeah your regional competition. I mean, it just it just doesn't look good, and it's not the Mexican team's fault either um, that they're just just on a slightly higher level than the rest of the CONCACAF region. But yeah, I, I mean, honestly, this game I think flip a coin. Honestly, <laughs> can't split them. Can't split them, honestly. I just, I, th- I don't think they're going to be very exciting games, to be honest. I don't think Tigres are going to want to, you know, go out there. I mean, they never do. So <laughs> why would they against America? Um, and I think America under Ambrise have been pretty cautious in big games as well. So I don't know. F- honestly, fl- flip a coin. I mean, you know, I think Tigres have got Gignac to thank for uh, for getting through to the final because of what he did against Carretero. So, you know, that may maybe make a difference. I mean, I think, I'm sure, you know, what Naib said, I'm sure we'll expand on it now, but with the suspensions for America, that, that could be a factor um, in the first leg. Yeah. Naib, your thoughts on uh, the first leg this Wednesday? You know, I just, uh, when I see this final, uh, I mean, I, I, I have a feeling Tigres and America is becoming a big rivalry in Mexico because... Uh, Tigres is doing stuff that America used to do, you know, put the big bucks on the table and bring someone like Gignac. That's something America used to do, but America hasn't done it as of late. America brings players that are made and done in Liga MX, like Coribe Peralta and Darwin Quintero. They don't bring a Gignac from Europe and, and all of a sudden become this strong, strong team. And, and one has to admit that Tigres' uh, fanaticada or crowd is one of the best in Mexico. Yeah. So it, 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 it's something new that is developing in the north of, of Mexico. And it's a rivalry that, of course, Americanistas are going to be like, no, that's not a rivalry. A rivalry is with Chivas. But the significance of the big bucks and the ability to bring the best players in the, in the region in South America and even from Europe, I think adds a, a lot of spice to this game. And let's be honest, Tigres has the coach, and America has a, a student, you know, basically, a young coach that is starting up his career as a, as a good coach in Mexico, but it can't compare to Tuca. And in the last years, well, in the last, in the last months, it has been all about Tuca. The CONCACAF Cup with El Tri, the 2015 Apertura with Tigres, and why not the CONCACAF Champions League? You know, I think, I think uh, Tuca is living a great moment over there in Monterrey. Yeah, no, we'll see how that goes. And I think uh, I usually don't like to watch Tigres that much. I mean, I think personally, like aesthetically speaking, you know, it's, <laughs> aesthetically speaking, it's just like it's it, it's just there's heavy amount of possession and it's not that exciting. They take their time, but I will say it was. I think against Dorados, that was I was definitely more entertaining to watch, and it was cool to see them actually be a little bit more desperate for a goal. You know, they they were outside of the top eight. They needed to move back in, and it was it was really exciting to see, and I'm wondering if they will be able to keep that momentum, that same energy seen in that last match. But as Tom said, I wouldn't be surprised if this if this first leg uh, ends uh, 0-0 <laughs> this Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. I, but I'll ask you guys, uh, just to wrap the show, just uh, let's hear some uh, quick predictions. Um just based off of the form, just based off like where the team's currently at. I'm not asking just for the first leg, but who is going to win the Champions League? Is it going to be Tigres? Is it going to be America? Tom, I'll go. I'll go slightly Tigres. I think the America suspensions in the first leg. Um, I think that mixed combined with Ambrise's kind of penchant for for not doing so well in the big games. Um, you know, America's disciplinary record has been awful of late, especially in the big games. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with Tigres, but like I said, I don't think there's there's very little between these two teams. Yeah. Naib, your yeah, thoughts? Well, I'll, just, I'll, I'll say Tigres as well. Uh, they will be, if they win this this title, they will be their first CONCACAF uh, championship in, in, in the team history. <laughs> so, I mean, I think um, it, it's, a new, it's a new era for this club. You know, I think after, uh, there could well be a before and after under Pierre Gignac because... It, it, you, you're starting to see a different a different uh, role that they're having in, in all of the Mexican League, and I think it will be great to see Tigres participate in the next Club World Cup. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually going to go th- with Tigres as well. I think they have a, they'll have a little bit more motivation. They don't know what their playoff situation is going to be like, and I think they were expected to at least grab one title. Kind of like America. I felt like America beforehand was expected to at least grab one title this season. So I think they'll have a little bit more momentum and motivation 
I don't say, I'm not going to say momentum, but yeah, more motivation uh, to grab this title. Um, all right, that's that wraps it up. Um, thank you guys for, for chatting. Thank you. Thanks to everyone on the chat for dealing with us. I know we were a couple minutes late. Um, I think that was Tom's fault, so I'll, I'll put that one on Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Naive and I, Naive and I were early and ready. <laughs> but thank you, Tom. <laughs> thank you, Naive, uh, for chatting like usual. I, I love doing this. But uh, really quickly, a shout-out, uh, kind of a serious moment, but a shout-out to Johnny Rico, uh, one of our dear friends. He, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but his, um, his appendix uh, burst recently. And he's uh, currently hospitalized in uh, San Diego. Um, the good news is I've, I've been chatting with him. He says he's getting better and that he should be uh, uh, getting an operation soon. Um, but yeah, just uh, any of you out there, yeah. just you know, yeah, keep keep him, keep people, him in your thoughts. If people are on Twitter, you can write to him at Johnny Rico One N and give him, send him a few messages. I'm sure he'll he'll love it. And and you know, if he is in there in hospital now, so yeah, I'm sure he'll. Uh, you know, you know, you know what Johnny's like on Twitter. I'm sure it'll be, uh, he'll be, he'll be busy on there answering, <laughs> answering you if you do get to speak to him. Yeah. So Johnny, if you're listening, uh, best of luck, man. You know, seriously, best of luck to you. And uh, I'll probably be visiting with you in the next couple of days. I've been, I've been talking to him, trying to figure out when I can visit him as well. So, all right. Uh, once again, thanks to you guys. Thank you, thank you, Naive. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I'll actually, I'll, I'll go to you guys. Well, one more, any, one more time. Any, any last thoughts on anything? Liga Mekis, national team. Soccer, food, housing, uh, politics. <laughs> just mess with you. Any, any, any last thoughts? Well, I'm just really happy that you know I've got internet. I want to thank you know the uh, providers, <laughs> the internet gods. <laughs> <laughs> the internet gods. I'd like to um, thank you know. Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, no, I'm happy to be back, man. Because you don't you don't realize until how, how important it is until it's gone. You have to, I was like living at the cafe. <laughs> I was living at the cafe, me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's my final thought. It's right, good one, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Tom, I'm, I'm glad you have internet again. Uh, Naive, any any last thoughts? Um, well, well, I think uh, this week the the Pachuca Chivas will be interesting to watch. So I think that that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, I think that the two teams play a great attacking style. Um, and also, uh, Rayados. You know, I think keep watching Rayados because. It's sort of the total opposite to what uh, Pachuca and Chivas do, you know, because yeah. Rayados, Rayados is Atlético de Madrid from Mexico. Let me put it that way, because they, 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 they got excellent attack, but they defend pretty well when it comes to those nitty-gritty games. So uh, those, those teams are, 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 are excellent to keep an eye on. Yeah, most definitely keep an eye on them. All right, thanks again, guys. Uh, thanks again, everyone, on the chat. Uh, be sure to uh, subscribe the show. Subscribe the show. Subscribe to the show uh, on the Footmex Source. You'll see at the bottom of your screen right there. Just click on subscribe. That way you can keep uh, updated on the on our future shows. And until then, uh, hopefully we'll be chatting with you this Thursday. I know uh, Weasel will be back from his uh, vacation hopefully soon. And until then, uh, thanks to everyone, and thank you, guys. See you later. See ya.